Il y a une note mystérielle qui vient de tomber, je ne sais pas si tu es au courant. Il euh, y a toutes des mesures au niveau sécurité routière qui vont être prises. On va au contraire obliger les gens à savoir utiliser un GSM en conduisant. Dans le périmé maintenant, on va devoir passer à un test GSM. Tu dois pouvoir envoyer un SMS et éviter un obstacle et passer à côté. Oh putain ah, oui. C'est pas moi qui l'ai inventé, tu peux regarder ici, voilà. Ouais. Il y en a beaucoup qui vont se cracher avec oh, ça, je te dis ça. Je veux bien croire, hein. Voilà, ton GSM, je vais chercher des frites. Regarde tout ce qu'on s'en va. Ah oui. Oh là là. Nous rentrerons en retard ce soir. Et attention que je corrige les fautes après. Hein. Regarde comment tu m'écris, Nicole. Oh là. Ah oui, c'est impossible. Ah, je suis de retour ce soir. Ah, ah oh, oh. oh là, c'est... Non, c'est... Ah ouais, là, là, ça te valait. Hein. Bon, t'imagines, ça, c'est un enfant. Ah, vas-y. 443. Ah Honnêtement, j'ai l'impression d'être un connard qui ne ouais. sait pas du tout conduire. Voilà, en fait. voilà exactement. J'ai écrit temps... n'importe quoi. Hein. Tu n'auras pas ton permis à cause de ça. À cause de ça ouais. ben, C'est dangereux ce qu'ils vont faire. Si la loi passe, je roule plus. Non. Tu tournes, oui, mais. Regarde la route. Ah oh. J'arrive pas. Non, mais j'arrive pas. Hein. Il va y avoir des tués. Il va y avoir des tués, hein Il va y avoir des morts sur les routes Je sais pas conduire, attraper mon GSM... Moi, je sais pas faire les deux, quoi hein C'est trop dangereux Thank you very much. Um, I'm honored and a pleasure to be here. I want to appreciate it, everyone who's made this possible for me. Um, you know, I start every presentation with, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you two things. One, I've been doing this for a long time, and public speaking is not something that I'm good at. So I apologize right now. I get really nervous. And two, uh, I get really emotional. Um, you know, Kathy. Uh, used a word that uh, sums it up best, and that word is passion. I'm very passionate about this, and um, a, a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm now 26 years old. Um, I live in Salt Lake, and uh, when I was 19 years old, I was living at home with, with my parents in a small town in northern Utah, and I, uh, I worked about 25 minutes from home, and it was a drive that, that I made hundreds of times. Um, when I grew up, if you wanted to go to the movies or go out with your friends or whatever you want to do, you would have to drive uh, to this town. So it was a road that I was very comfortable with. I drove it every day for work, uh, every weekend. And on my way to work one morning, I decided that I'm going to text and drive something, again, that I did all the time, something that uh, was normal to me, I thought was okay, I thought that it was safe, uh, and I thought that I was invincible. And I'm on my way to work, I'm sending and reading text messages, and I go across the center line, and I hit another car head on. And in that car are two men who are headed to work. And 
Both those men were killed on impact. Both were loving husbands and fathers, had families, had, had children. Um, the one man has a daughter, and she's about my age. And one day in court, she got the chance, their families got the chance to get up and address me, to, to say anything they'd like to say to me. And She gets up and she talks about her wedding, about how she had just gotten married. And she talks about her wedding and talks about how her father wasn't there to walk her down the aisle. And she turned to me and she looked right at me and she said, because you took that from me. She was absolutely right, I did. My selfish decision to text while driving took that opportunity from her and her father. I thought that the message that I was sending was more important to me than that opportunity was to her and her father. That's something that I think about every single day something that I regret every single day. It'll be seven years in September, and it never gets easier. Every day I, I look myself in the mirror, I go to bed at night, and I think about two men's lives that I took in an accident that was 100% preventable. As part of my sentence, I was sentenced to, to 30 days in jail. And I, uh, you know, I was someone growing up that, that that was something that I didn't look at my life and say, you know what, at some point I'm going to spend time in jail. It's something that I did not want to do. Um, 30 days for me is a long time, very difficult. And first, Three nights, four days there, they put me in a 23-hour lockdown cell, and the, the jail was overpopulated. So, so what they did for me was they gave me a, a little blue pad. It was about an inch and a half thick, and they, they threw it on the cement floor, and, um, and that was it. You know, it was about a foot away from the toilet in our cell, and I'm there for 23 hours a day with two other guys that I have nothing in common with. Uh, I know nothing about. They don't, they don't care about you. They don't want to hear your story. There's no sympathy. Um, and then after that, I moved to a 12-hour lockdown cell where I was in a cell with a, with a guy who had, um, he was waiting to be transported to prison because he had just nearly beaten his girlfriend to death. And stuck in there with this guy for 12 hours a day, and it's, again, very tough, lonely, difficult experience for me. And I tell this story for, for one reason and one reason only, and that's because uh, I, was, I was once asked, and um, I still get asked all the time, uh, Reggie, you served 30 days in jail for taking two men's lives. Was that enough time for you and for what you did? And I answered, I said, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if it was or was not, and I think back now, and that's still a very tough question, and, and I don't know. But one thing I do know is that if I could go spend every single day of the rest of my life in that 23-hour lockdown cell to bring back those two men's lives, I would do it in a heartbeat. I wouldn't hesitate. I would go stay on that floor every single day to save those lives. But I can't. It's too late for me. I already made that decision, made that choice, and I regret it every day. The only thing that I can do now is, is go out and, and talk to other people and, and share my message and, 
And really, my message is, is this, especially to, to the youth that I go and speak at. I, I, I say, look at me. Just, just look at me. Say, you, you don't want to be me. You don't want to put people through what I've put people through. You don't want families to go through what I've put families through. You will regret that message every single day, every day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't wish I could go change and, and, and take back what I did. And I cannot. I just hope that going out and speaking to others and sharing my message, they can save someone's life. The solution is easy. It is easy. Put your phone away when you drive, and you might have saved someone's life that day. It's simple. Had I turned my phone off, I would have went on living my life like normal did the things that I wanted to do, accomplished the goals that I wanted to accomplish. Um, those families would have continued. Megan would have had her, her, her father at her wedding. Um, and I would have drove another three minutes, got to work, sent the text messages that I needed to send. And I wouldn't be here today. And I wish that was the case. So I hope that being here today, uh, that I can help someone here. And by reaching out with AT&T and the It Can Wait message, that we can touch thousands of lives, millions of lives, change drivers all, all over the, the nation, all over the world. Uh, this is a global problem. And I want to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to be here today and for the message that you're sharing. And in any way possible that I can, I can help, um, I would love to do any and everything that I can. Again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it.